Welcome back to the merge live at Texas, I'm sorry, North American North Blockchain, America. uh, North American Blockchain Council, or uh, North American Blockchain Summit. I'll get it right here eventually. You've been doing all the intros today, so. I know, I, I figured I'd throw you a curveball today. We've got <laughs> <Natalie> <laughs> like Brunel. Half a second before you do it. I'm here with Frank Kushner, I'm Mark Hopkins, we're here with Natalie Brunel. Welcome to the show. Thanks Welcome so to Texas. Me. Thanks yeah, for thank coming. You. It's been fun. I've visited Texas so many times this year, so oh, glad to be back. It's kind of big. Texas is Bitcoin country, as they say. It's what I hear. Yeah. What I hear it's what I'm seeing. You've been paying close attention to what's going on, talking to these folks backstage. What are you hearing? You know, it's really exciting to see multiple U.S. presidential candidates talking about Bitcoin and really feeling like they they want to come out there and say they're going to protect the right to self-custody, they're going to protect privacy, calling out some of the activities that we've seen in the current administration where it seems to be trying to gain more and more control and you know, tax the crypto mining industry in a way that's really unfair. So it's really inspiring to see. I had the chance to have Vivek on my show earlier this week, so then I interviewed him again on stage. It was, it was great. He uh, launched his crypto policy, which is very, not only thoughtful, but very specific, the things he wants to do in order to to protect the integrity of this space and allow allow Bitcoin adoption to flourish and help it potentially even bring the dollar back to some sense of sanity and constraint instead of just going further and further into debt. Uh, so that was really interesting to learn about. And I had a chance to interview uh, RFK Jr. at a presser. So it's been yeah, an exciting. Uh, it's been an exciting I'm looking day forward here. to see him later on today. That's, that's fantastic. It's great. So what has your experience uh, been lately uh, with the kind of the, the fall with Bitcoin? And, and it seems like I feel like it's become a lot more in, in the mainstream, even the political mainstream, because it seems like we hit a base that things are starting to move back up. It really is funny how every time the number goes up, there's so much more attention, right? It was certainly a, a better buy when it was 16,000, but everyone was running scared. Uh, so now, yeah, it's, it's thawing out of crypto winter. And I, I'm really looking forward to the next year because we have a confluence of different events. We have still a very volatile macro environment where I do believe we will have a harder landing than they hoped for. I Agreed. think we're going to have a recession. I think it's going to be painful. They're going to reinitiate the money printer. Uh, and I do think that that will bring more liquidity to Bitcoin. Uh, and yep. people, again, are very curious when the price starts to tick up. But then we also have the halving. We have the spot Bitcoin ETFs that are on the horizon and potentially approved in the next, you know, maybe couple months. So I think there's a lot of energy and it's, it's a, like a coiled up spring right now because the hodlers have not been selling during this bear market. So there's a lot of upside potential here. And I'm, I certainly am not going to be selling. So I look forward to that next bull run. So what, what, what cycle number is this for you? Like you've been... Yeah, I've like as as all of us who follow you have kind of watched your journey into Bitcoin. But what's is this your first like uh, major winter? You've you've weathered one of these before. I have weathered one before as an investor. It's my first big cycle as a podcaster and as a right. figure in the space who's trying to get the education out there. Uh, but I've been in Bitcoin actually since 2017. So okay. I saw it ride up from 3,000 to 20,000 and I held on and un I never sold. <laughs> and then I saw it crash back down and I, I, I bought up, I bought all the way down. And I really believe that this is the future and that this is the best savings technology that people in my generation, the millennials have and Gen Z and future generations. And it's something we so badly need because so many people today are just struggling to make ends meet. And more and more frequently, two incomes are not enough. And I think there's such a downward pressure on society economically just to just to tread water. And it shouldn't be that way because the more that people are able to be free of that anxiety of worrying about how they're going to afford the roof over their head and the education for their kids, then they can quietly start thinking about, you know, the innovations that they're going to create, what value they're going to produce for society. I just, I can't wait for a world where more and more people are adopting this form of money and, uh, and, and where we're, we're cooperative too. I think that it'll help us be a more cooperative society where we can actually trust our money as opposed to have a very corrupted system of finance. Interestingly, I, I kind of feel like in the past 20, 30 years, we've also seen kind of the growing of the nuclear family kind of breaking the far and you see more and more people taking initiative on their own savings. And I know that you have uh, made a tremendous effort into also helping with equality in, in the uh, population of women. 
yeah. in, in Bitcoin. So could you talk to us a little bit about how you've been educating how how you see it from that point of view? Yeah, so I attended my first Bitcoin conference in 2021. I had just launched my podcast. I didn't know what to expect. I really just wanted to meet other Bitcoiners yeah. and, and also try to get some of the figures that I really looked up to to come on my show. So I took my best girlfriend and we were so outnumbered. It was just so crazy to see <laughs> that we would walk into every room and it was like hundreds, thousands of guys and yeah. not a lot of women. Yeah. And, uh, I joked that it was super convenient when it was time to go to the bathroom because there was no line. And for the guys, I felt bad for them because it was like stretching out of the uh, uh, around the corner. But I thought, you know, why aren't the girls in this space? Because my girlfriends, not only are they passionate about making money, but they're also passionate about saving money for the future. And so many of them need to hear the message of Bitcoin. So I just hope to serve as a, 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 a welcoming voice so that they see that they're represented and they feel like they can be a part of this community too. I think Bitcoin is for everyone, you know, it's for, it's for kids, it's for the old, the young, the the every color, every nationality, every language, yeah. and that excites me. So we're having a women's event here and I'm very excited because we're, we're getting the girls into Bitcoin and I love it. Yeah, it's it's um, it's fun to watch. I uh, My cousin up in New York, he kind of focuses on that market. And, and while you're quiet, very focused and very diligent, you know, it, it seems to be kind of, that's what I've seen and what I've noticed lately. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate, you know, because when I first started, I was a little intimidated by how techy Bitcoin seemed. I thought this is only for people who have studied computer science or engineering or finance. And I was n none of those things. So yeah. I, I really was worried that I wouldn't understand it or fit in. But it's not, it's just, it's money. We all use money. <laughs> money does not discriminate. And, uh, and we all need money. We need to be able to have a money that we can trust into the future. So yeah, Bitcoin's for everyone. Yeah, especially with, uh, sorry, Mark. Right. Um, one of the things that I found fascinating though is that you know, you've got such a broad audience that you have, the, you have the capacity to bring some really important people on your podcast to talk about really great things. And that was something that traditional media has uh, kind of missed. So thank you so much for bringing that out and, and being able to uh, create a bigger platform for that. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, it's because of decentralized media and information that I've been able to do that. Agreed, yeah. Uh, because I certainly tried to report on Bitcoin as a reporter because I, I come from the legacy television journalism world, but I was very limited in what I could do in terms of the stories about this space. So now that I'm independent, I can really dig in and help the education grow and tap into these stories and interviews that I really think matter. And I'm excited that I've had that opportunity. So, so what's your approach to education? Like, how do you, how do you play, uh, place those like stepping stones of knowledge? Because it's a, I, I mean, I've, I've been in the kind of the education space for a while and, and it's at the point where we've probably converted all the computer science guys over to Bitcoin that we're going to get <laughs> until like, it's just the world's native reserve currency. So how do you talk to the normies? How do you talk to the people that don't want to deal with private keys and 24 phrase, you know, past phrases? Like, how do you how do you get them to cross that chasm over to what it's, you have a responsible crypto usage? Yeah, it's a great question because I feel like over the last couple of years, I've realized that you kind of have to meet people where they are. Right. And for different groups, different individuals, it's going to be different. Uh, some people have a pain point like I did. My family lost everything in the great financial crisis. So I had a seed planted that I distrusted the system and thought there was something rigged about it. But for someone else, it'll be, you know, a different pain point. For some, there isn't a pain point. They grew up and benefited from fiat and they're doing okay. So you have to approach them even more differently because they want to probably preserve and retain the value of what they've been able to save. So it really depends on the on the group that I'm speaking to or the event that I'm going to. I try to cater it um, because at the end of the day, what I've realized is so many people take for granted money, where it comes from, how it's created, what the value is, inflation. Most people don't question why every year 2% of our value just disappears. In oh my power. goodness, yes. Why do we accept that? Why do we have a system of inflation? Why is it 2%? Is it really 2%? Right. You know, so I try to get people to be curious about those questions and then go from there. Great. Well, that's, that's great what you're doing and I hope, hope your uh, you're, 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 you're continued approach is effective because Thank we you. definitely need to get that work. Get get the get the knowledge out there. Yes, we do. Thank you. Since you do work with such a diverse population, how do you uh, 
how do you address the different populations as far as like everybody has the same question it's money right how do you differentiate your conversations among the most sophisticated to the least sophisticated what's your one like what what would be the one thing that you would say well, I think everyone's Im impacted by inflation. So I think that's the, the best place to start is to find out what what people know about what? our current system, mm -hmm. our current system of banking, for example, which right. if all of us try to go get our money from, uh, you know, Chase or Wells Fargo or Bank of America, Minutes. they don't have it, right. right? Like they don't actually have it in reserves. So I try, I try to peel back the layers of what they currently know about the system and, and really also ask them, how are they planning for the future? Because something that I think about a lot more in Bitcoin than I did before is how, how do you think about 10, 20 years from now? Before I knew about Bitcoin, I was very pessimistic about the future. I thought, wow, things are getting worse. Things are getting harder. It's harder to afford the cost of living and a nice house and, and, and affording a family. Now with Bitcoin, I look at the future with hope. I think we can solve these problems. We have a tool. People are opting into this parallel peaceful system and network, and it's going to continue to grow. And technology actually fixes these things. And once the technology takes hold, like the internet did, right. like cars, like the printing press, it's transformative. And network effect is really powerful. And so I think that this is the next transformative re revolutionary technology. We get to be on the front lines of it. This is so exciting. People think they're late. We're not, we're all very early. We're all later than someone, but we're all still early. And yeah. I truly think that people are, people are gonna grow up super familiar with just using Bitcoin, not necessarily knowing all the intricacies of mining or the technical components, but they're gonna know Bitcoin in the same way that today, a lot of people just grow up understanding the internet, right? Yeah. We understand driving a car and no longer a horse and buggy, right? Like it's just yeah. technology progresses, we're progressing and, and Bitcoin will help us with all of that. So uh, as a media person who's done, you've mentioned like kind of the centralized media or federated media. So where are you, um, where do you fall like kind of like all other things that aren't Bitcoin? I know you're primarily a Bitcoin education. Do you, do you play around with some of like the Web3 tools or some of the Web3 media platforms that exist? No, so far I'm really focused on Bitcoin education because again, I think we've got so, so uh, far to go in terms of just educating people about that, questioning what is money and learning about Bitcoin. And I think everyone needs to start there. But I'm a huge freedom maximalist, you know, whatever you want to put in your portfolio, whether you want to gamble with things or you want to be super conservative and do 100 percent Bitcoin. You know, it's not my business what's in someone's portfolio. Right. I think it's my job to just share the message of Bitcoin and educate them on the 101 if that's where they're starting out and just help them through that. Because we all had someone help us. Right. Yeah. Um, so so for me, the focus has been Bitcoin because I think that we need to fix the money. And the only blockchain monetary network that can fix the money is Bitcoin. And so I'm, yeah. I'm excited about focusing squarely with Bitcoin. How do people find you? How do they follow you? Where do they find more information about your educational and yeah. other? Yeah, sure. So I have a podcast called Coin Stories on audio and video platforms. So wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube, and uh, very active on X. Right. And I'm actually working on some 101 video uh, content so that people that are just beginning into the next bull market will have some more resources where they can just learn about Bitcoin in an in a approachable way. That is awesome. Thanks for Great having me. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for watching The Merge. We've got a ton more stuff for you to watch on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Check us out.